Second problem, a basic air standard Brayton cycle has a pressure ratio of 10. The air, the R for air is 287 joule per kg Kelvin and uh, the specific uh, heat ratio gamma is 1.4. Air enters the compressor at 290 Kelvin and uh, enters the turbine at 1120 Kelvin. Assuming the isentropic efficiency of 90% for both compressor and turbine, determine the air temperature at the exits of turbine and compressor, net specific work output and thermal efficiency of the cycle. So now, basic breakdown cycle, what are the components in this? When I say cycle, it is a closed cycle. The components are first there will be a compressor. air compressor which is actually driven by a turbine, a gas turbine. But I think the air standard cycle it is only a, we will only use the air. Then what happens is the air comes in, at it is given is air comes in at a temperature of 290, so 290 Kelvin. So inlet say state 1, this is 290 Kelvin and uh, this is compressed to pressure ratio, so this is exit 2. So now P2 by P1 equal to 10, that is the pressure ratio, okay. So you can see that low pressure air at 290 Kelvin enters the air compressor, it is compressed to state 2 where it is, the pressure ratio is P2 by P1 is 10 is given. The values of P1 and P2 are not known, but the pressure ratio is known. Now, I have to add heat to this. So, I will have a heat exchanger where heat is added. Say, let us say Q dot H. The steady state steady flow. Okay. So, some M dot is the flow rate of the air. M dot. Now, temperature. So, this is exit of this is actually. state 3, state 3, the inlet to the turbine is state 3. So, here temperature T3 is, temperature is 1120 Kelvin, okay. At pressure, this is a constant pressure operation, it is operates in constant pressure. So, constant pressure operation happens in the heat exchanger where heat is added. Now, after expanding in the turbine, basically, it is adiabatic, compressor is also adiabatic and turbine is also adiabatic and uh, it comes out to the state 4. Now I have to close the cycle. So for that I use one more heat exchanger which is basically operates between low pressure. Here the pressure is P1. So here P1 equal to P4. Similarly, here in this P2 equal to P3. This also operates at constant pressure. And uh, you can see that in the compressor, pressure is increased from P1 to P2, maintaining a pressure ratio of 10. Similarly, in the turbine, pressure is decreased from P3 to P4. P3 by P4 is also 10. So that is P3 by P4 also. When I say pressure ratio across turbine and compressor, the pressure ratio is same in this case. The basic cycle, basic cycle and the air is a working fluid, so it is called air standard cycle. Air is a working fluid, heat is added and here in order to cool this to 290 Kelvin, continuously it should be cooled 290 Kelvin at the pressure of P1, lowest pressure of the cycle. Here some heat has to be rejected. Q dot C is the heat rejected. Obviously, this turbine runs the air compressor but also should produce some work. No. So, that is this. I will say, I will say W net because part of the, if W T is the turbine work, part of the work is supplied to the compressor. So, W dot C. So, W dot T minus W dot C will be equal to net work which is coming out of the 
turbine which is used to run a generator etc. So, this is the schematic of a yeah, basic Brayton cycle. Brayton cycle. Okay, now how to fix the states again? Because here one two temperatures are given. The inlet to the turbine temperature is given, and uh, inlet to the the compressor uh, temperature is given. 290 is the inlet to the compressor and the inlet to the turbine is 1120. These are two temperatures given. And the isentropic efficiencies of compressor and turbine are given. Other than that, only the pressure ratio is given. The absolute values of the pressure are not known now. So, how to solve this problem? Here, I can draw the cycle. Let us only take TS diagram which is very important. So now the ISO bar. Okay. So for example, this is say P equal to P1 and this is P equal to P2, or I'll say P equal to P3 here equal to P4. So now this is state one pressure P1, this is 290, this is in Kelvin. Now, the operation of the compressor, compressor increases the pressure of air from P1 to P2. Now, this operation can be isentropic, isentropic, so leading to state 2 S yes, or it can be an actual state 2 like this. Okay. Now, this compression, this is isentropic compression, this is the actual compression. Okay, now heat is added, now it goes from this, heat is added. So, in this process, Q dot H is added. Now, here obviously work is added, work to the compressor, basically from the turbine itself. Now, this goes to state 3 state 3 here. So, where the temperature is 1120. These are the two temperatures given 1 and uh, 3. Now, in the turbine the operation can be again isentropic because isentropic efficiency is given. So, it, it cannot be isentropic, but if it is isentropic it will go to state 4s where s3 equal to s4s here s1 equal to s2s. But since I think the efficiency is given, the actual process leads to state 4, which is having higher entropy. You can see that when there is a irreversibility, the actual state entropy will be higher than the isentropic state entropy, which is the initial state entropy, like that. So, this is the closure of the cycle. Then here from 4 to 1, heat here the turbine develops the power, and here heat is rejected. Q dot C. So, this is the T S diagram of the basic blade on cycle. Okay. So, this is a, this are this shows the control volumes involved, four control volumes, compressor, heat exchanger where heat is added at constant pressure, then uh, gas turbine which actually does the work, part of the work is applied to the compressor that is W C and uh, W T minus WC is separated as network and uh, in the condenser, uh, sorry, the condenser, instead of condenser is a heat exchanger here, where the air is cooled back to 290 Kelvin, so heat is rejected here. So, this is the weight on cycle and TS diagram of that, okay. Now, I have to fix the states. Obviously, fixing the state is one of the important thing. Uh, I told you, we do not know the absolute pressure, but I, I can I do not need to know the, uh, the absolute pressures also. I do not need to know the ideal pressures, absolute values of them. So, pressure ratio is given, but I need to fix the temperatures. Okay, I have the actual state basically 2 and 4. For that, since isentropic efficiencies are given, first I will find the temperatures where which is attained by an isentropic process. For, for example, 2 s yes, from 1 to 2 s yes, isentropic process, 2 s yes, I can determine this temperature we find, then apply the isentropic efficiency 
to get the state to temperature. Similarly, I first find the 4S assuming an isentropic process for the turbine, then apply the isentropic efficiency for the turbine 90 percent to get the actual state. So, that is the thing we have to do. So, okay, now air is an ideal gas. So, it obeys P V equal to R T. Okay, P is in Pascals, then V is in meter cube per kg. This is the specific gas constant given in the problem, and this is in Kelvin. And uh, for isentropic process, okay, it obeys PV power gamma equal to constant gamma equal to Cp by Cv. So, these two we know already. So, combining these two, I can find the pressure ratio related to the temperature that is P2 by P1 equal to T2s by T1 T2s divided by T1 power gamma by gamma by gamma minus 1. So, this I can get when I combine the equation of state PV equal to RT and uh, PV per gamma equal to constant I can get this relationship which also we know. So, similarly I can write P3 by P4 we know P3 by P4 equal to P2 by P1 correct equal to I can write T3 divided by T4s power again gamma by gamma minus 1 gamma by gamma, gamma is given as 1.4 or is given as 287. So, this is the a procedure first I will find the isentropic exit state for the compressor which is 2s and uh, for the turbine which is 4s then apply the isentropic efficiency for these two okay so let us find these two temperatures first okay now p2 by p p1 equal to t2s divided by t1 power 1.4 by 0.4 which is equal to which implies 10 power 0.4 by 1.4 equal to T2s divided by 290 which implies T2s equal to what? T2s equal to five hundred and sixty five hundred and sixty Kelvin. Okay. Now, similarly apply this for the turbine. So, this implies again P3 by P4 is 10. So, 10 power 0.4 by 1.4 equal to T3 by T4s which implies T4s equal to T3 divided by 10 power 0.4 by 1.4 which is equal to 580 Kelvin. Okay. So, here you can mark them. So, this T2S is basically 560 it is not to scale actually. So, this is this is 580 580 Kelvin correct. So, this two we get. So, almost same we can say. So, we have to actually mark it properly. So, now for finding the actual states that is T2 and T4 apply the isentropic efficiencies. So, how, we do, how will you do it? Isentropic efficiency of the compressor equal to what? The isentropic work input to the compressor 
divided by the actual work input of the compressor because w s is lesser than w a okay for compressor so this is written as see for compressor q dot minus w c dot equal to m dot into h 2 minus h 1 okay now ignoring k e and p e changes steady state free flow equation so now this is zero so that means minus w dot c by m dot equal to w actual you can say w c equal to h 2 minus h 1 or w c equal to h 1 minus h 2 so you can supply that uh, write that here h 1 minus h 2 yes divided by h 1 minus h 2 okay so now isentropic efficiency of compressor equal to 0.9 given in the problem equal to i'll say cp into t1 minus t2s divided by cp into t1 minus t2 so assuming perfect gas cp is a constant so cp cancels so this is equal to 290 minus 58 560 divided by 290 minus t2 which implies t2 equal to 590 590 kelvin similarly for the turbine q dot minus w t dot equal to m dot into h 4 the turbine is 3 to 4 correct so h 4 minus h 3 which implies this is zero so w t equal to what w t equal to w t dot by uh, m dot which is equal to h 4 minus h 3 or w 3 w t equal to h 3 minus h 4 so isentropic efficiency of the turbine equal to 0.9 given in the problem equal to h 3 minus h ah, okay here i have to write actual work by a turbine divided by the isentropic work okay so because since w a is less than w s okay when there is a power consuming device like a compressor in the isentropic operation it consumes consumes lesser power than the actual so isentropic work input will be lesser than actual work input for a power producing device like turbine the actual work will be lesser than the isentropic work and efficiency is always will have the quantity which is greater than the uh, greater to be in the numeric uh, denominator so this is equal to h3 minus h4 divided by h3 minus h4s yes. so i can say 0.9 equal to t3 minus t4 divided by t3 minus t4s yes, equal to 1120 minus 580 divided by 1120 minus t4 sorry uh, this is 580 and this is not known so this is t4 okay so this implies t4 equal to 634 634 kelvin so now actual temperatures are determined what are they t2 equal to 590 t4 equal to 634 t1 is 290 and uh, t3 is 1120 so all the four temperatures are determined now i can write the first law okay so specific work done by the turbine equal to wt equal to h3 minus h4 equal to cp into t3 minus t4 okay what is cp cp equal to gamma r by gamma minus 
equal to 1.4 into 287 divided by 1.4 minus 1 equal to 1004.5 joule per kg kelvin okay similarly i can write for okay first finish this so wt will be equal to 1004.5 into t3 is 1120 t4 is 634 so that will be equal to 488 488187 joule per kg okay similarly specific work input to the compressor equal to wc equal to h1 minus h2 equal to cp into t1 minus t2 which is equal to 1004.5 into 290 minus 590 okay equal to minus 301350 joule per kg that is the so what is network net specific network is equal to w t plus w c which is equal to 488187 minus 301350 equal to 186 837 joule per kg so now i want q which is added so go back to this i have found wt specific by m dot wc by m dot now q dot h by m dot we have to find what is h3 minus h2 okay q h equal to q dot h by m dot equal to h3 minus h2 equal to cp times t3 minus t2 equal to 1004.5 into t3 is 1120 minus t2 is 590 correct so that will be equal to 532385 joule per kg so what is efficiency thermal efficiency equal to w net divided by qh please understand i cannot neglect the come see in the case of uh, rankin cycle the pump work was neglected because it is very small but here compressor work cannot be neglected you can see turbine work is 488187 but the compressor work is more than 3/4 of that or maybe 3/4 of that so we can neglect that so network net work output by the heat supply that will be taken into account so that will be equal to 186837 divided by 532385 which is equal to 0.3509 or 35.1 percentage so that is the efficiency so these are these are the quantities asked so here first one is the air temperature of the turbine and compressor exists real that is uh, here t4 and t2 then specific work output and uh, for calculating net uh, thermal efficiency we have to uh, calculate qh also so we calculate all the things and this is the answer